Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word, the truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that what we do not believe in this state. We should expect no good thing from the most high. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of, or a gift of, or any supernatural experience that we may have. It can and it will be used against us when. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the rooms and the saints that couldn't make it to the saints watching in on the camera. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Brother Daniel, man, we need you back in the house, man. I don't know what's going on. He said he's coming for pure. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he said he's said he coming for pure. I ain't seen my man. How long has it been since I, I ain't seen my man? About a year. I went to go see the baby not too long ago. Oh, for real? Mm -hmm. oh, what's up? I still ain't seen the baby. All right. Look um, like huh? Look like mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She is gorgeous. I was looking at the picture for show. Sure. She mm -hmm. is gorgeous. Um. All right. Catch me up. Where we was at last week? You got notes? Uh-oh. Mel about to save your butt again, TJ. Every week she got to save you. You ought to be ashamed of your darn self. You gotta be ashamed of your daughter. Uh, okay. so we about... What are we talk about, Mel? I can't even talk to T. I can't even look at TJ right now. You know what I'm saying? What are we talking about? Okay, so we talked about somebody getting stabbed when he got when somebody got his gear. So he had a he, he had a now I remember. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let TJ tell us the rest. Somebody got stabbed when they grabbed his beard. That's what it was. What up? <laughs> what else happened? What was his name? What was his name? You remember his name? You weren't here last. Well, you was here last week. What was his name? Joab. Very good. Right. So that was Joab. Right. Joab walked up to Amasa. Right. You remember Amasa? Amasa. You know what I'm saying? Amasa replaced him. Right. Because David. You know what I'm saying? David was a little perturbed to Joab. So David was like, you know what I'm saying? Amasa, won't you? You know what I'm saying? Why don't you run all the soldiers now? But the Mesa was late. Right? He was late getting back. Joe David told three days, I need you to get all the men together so we can move. Right? He didn't have them ready in time. So David started taking matters. Look, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what's his name? What's Joe, our brother's name? Uh, Asahel. No, no, no. Uh, Abiasha. Abiasha. There we go. Abiasha. He told Abiasha. He was like, Abiasha, man, look, why don't you, why don't you chase these boys down and get it done for us? Right? Joab took that opportunity. He said, you know what I'm saying? Good. You remember, remember Joab had his, you know what I'm saying, his sword girded to him, close to him. That thing was loose. That boy walked up to him, grabbed him by a beard, you know what I'm saying? But you know, like, you know what I'm saying, we was menly men. You know what I'm saying? Menly, you know what I'm saying, men of war. So we didn't do that type of stuff, like grab him by a beard, kiss, kiss our brother on the cheek. You know what I'm saying? Like, ah, yeah, let's go get these boy. You know what I'm saying? So he did it like it was a friendly gesture. You know what I'm saying? Mm, kiss him on the cheek. And when he thought it was all good, he like, shit, jack it, you know what I'm saying? And caught him on the side with that thing. Where he stabbed him at? Who remember? Oh, that's a bad boy. How you remember that? You remember that part because you a sicko in the brain sometimes. I know what it is. You, you were looking like, ooh, you stabbed him. Don't let him play you. Rib? You know what I'm saying? You try, don't you stab nobody in no darn fifth rib. Oh, now, that was a good job, boy. That was a good job. <laughs> After that, then what happened? He was he was trying to get into this place. He was trying to get into this one place, and then this lady was talking to him. It was like yeah. she was like, "Please don't destroy my town or something." And, and then she that's said, right. She said you should throw his head over the wall. That's right. Without them having to do any damage to like where they lived at. Yeah, because before that, Joab was about to take the whole place, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He is he is trying to break through the wall. The lady was looking like look. look, look. You about to tear down, you know what I'm saying? You about to tear down an important place in Israel over this mess. What's the problem? Right? 
He is like, no, nah, look, we, you know, what I'm that's a lie. He said, that's not our goal. Our goal is not to tear down nothing. Our goal is to kill that man. If you listen, if you deliver, if y'all deliver him over to us, we out of here. She was like, don't even worry about it. We'll throw his head over the gate. She was like, we ain't not playing these games. So then that's what they did. Everybody packed up. Everybody left. What happened after that? Who remember? Uh, they were like, I think we're. That was close to the end, but what else happened? Giant. Yep, they killed four giants, didn't they? All right, four four additional giants. You know what I'm saying? Remember, David was out there in the field with him. Remember, David old though. You know what I'm saying? At this point, David oh, he's still the king, but he old at this point, right? So he he running around. He trying to you know what I'm saying? He trying to get to it, and it's like the rest of these boys. What you go, if your king out there? He oh, he ain't got it like he used to have it. He old. What you got to do then? You got to protect them. So you got somebody trying to kill he, you. You got somebody trying to kill him, and now you got to try to you know what I'm saying? Fight both of them. Right? It get tough. So what they tell David? They tell David, you gotta stay your butt at home. Why they say that he had to stay home though? No, they ain't say that. That's what I said. They didn't say that. Without, without you, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be trouble. They said, man, somebody, you you know, if these if, if they get you, right? If these people kill you, the whole hope of Israel is gone. Right? Everybody gonna lose hope. They're gonna be like, dang, we lost. Right? Yeah, like if they get one of us, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, business as usual. They get you, this a this a big loss, right? They're like, you stay at home. Now, what I said was, part of that was because your butt old and you ain't got it like you used to. Why don't you go ahead and sit your butt down? You know what I'm saying? But that's me talking. That ain't the book talking. All right? What else we got? What else happened? We recapped. We learned a little bit about, you know what I'm saying, David's most valiant men. Remember we learned that? Remember he had his top three, then he, you know what I'm saying, then he went on to talk about a few others that they had out there killing folks, right? Remember, David was surrounding himself with killers like the real ones right remember he attracted the killer because david was he was he was a real one right when he killed when david killed goliath that made everybody like because he was just a boy right then after that he went out and killed a whole bunch of philistines in the war then after that all the real killers were looking at him like that's a bad boy over there that's the young boy that's your young boy that's a bad boy over there you know what i'm saying because we all fighting on the same side so as he get older and as he he rises and he ends up being a king, all you know is, oh, that's the dude that used to kill all them Philistines. No, I want to I want to join the army too. Like, I want to I want to work with him too. So he surrounded himself with the respectable killers, and that's what was around him. So the book the book highlighted that that's how he won all the wars, and that's how a lot of that stuff happened because he he surrounded himself with the people that was adept at war. Like we could get it done every time. Y'all remember every time somebody messed with him, what he do? He called the young boys. You know what I'm saying? He'd be like, he'd be like, you know what I'm saying? Why you think, why you think that you could just kill, you know what I'm saying, Saul's son and just come talk to me? You know what I'm saying? Then he'd be like, he'd go to the young boy, he'd be like, why don't y'all go ahead and get him? What the young boys do after that? Get it, but every single time. Right? He always had the young boys with him. Right? So it's like, it's important to understand why David had the success. David had the success because he was honored by God. And by being honored by God. He'll most high God to put you in a situation where he is surround you with them killers, right? In a different way, you know what I'm saying? But with them killers, he is surround you with them. Ain't nobody gonna touch him, right? Ain't nobody gonna touch him, right? And that's that's how David's life was. Everybody' life play out a little bit different, but the way the most high God gonna direct you, you know what I'm saying? If you walk orderly according to what the most high God put out in front of you, then he'll protect you in the way that he's gonna protect you. You just gotta be down for the ride. And that's what David was. You remember, David had a wild, wild. He didn't, he didn't just come in as king, right? You know how long it took? We've been reading this thing since when? How long have you been reading Samuel? Mm, a couple weeks. We've been reading. We've probably been in Samuel for like a, two, two and a half months, right? In both of the Samuels for like two and a half months. And we look at it. Most of that time, David wasn't king. Most of the time we've been reading, David wasn't king. You are. I ain't never. What in the world? Come here so I can put you on camera. Come here. Come here. Come here. No, you like it though. That's my problem with it. You you enjoy. It. You sit there. Oh my god. Oh, you gotta be ashamed of yourself. Why don't you go cuddle with her? Come on. Come cuddle. Ain't nothing wrong with him. Um. What else we get? Did we missing anything? What else? Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, talking about his mighty name. 
All right, well then let's pick it up. This is 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. Let's see what the book say. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. And again, the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Israel. Mm -hmm. And he moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. But the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him, Go now through all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba and number the people, mm -hmm. that I may know the number of the people. Mm -hmm. Joab said unto the king, Now Yahuwah thy God add unto the people how many soever they be. Right? Hundredfold. So this is Joab, right? Joab is trying to let them know, like, man, listen, most high God add on. So you could tell what what the you could tell what the situation was based off of Joab's response, right? The most high God said he was angered with David. Therefore, he moved against him to make him number the people, right? We don't have no nothing in our law that documents that it is illegal to number the people. Right. However, we know that the most high God moved him to do this because he was angry. And then Joab's response to him was, listen, 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 listen. I hope God increase your numbers and give you all the people. So that lets you know what David's intentions were. His intention was, I want to grow my army. Why might he want to grow his army? Yeah, uh, probably about to be out of there soon. Probably about to be out of there soon. What else? What What has recently happened that might make him feel like I need to grow my army? Uh, uprising. How many uprisings? It was like two: Absalom, then Sheba. He had to deal with Saul back in the day. Right? He's constantly been in wars and fights. So he his mindset is: Okay, I'm about to get up out of here. I'm about to hand this over to my son. So before I get up out of here, let me make sure the army is set up, right? Watch this. Grab, um, grab, uh, what I want. Grab First Kings. Grab First Kings chapter one. First Kings chapter one. We are gonna come back to uh, second Second Samuel too, but this is uh, First Kings chapter one. Yeah, uh, verse one, chapter one, verse one. This is first Kings chapter one, starting at verse one. Now, King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Mm hmm. Wherefore his servant said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord, the king, a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my lord the king may get heat. Mm -hmm. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coasts of Israel, and found Abishag, the a Shoe, Shunammite, and brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair, and cherished the king, and ministered to him. But the king knew her not. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be I will be king. Mm -hmm. He prepared him chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. And his father had not dis displeased him at any time in saying, why have you done so? And he also was a very goodly man and his mother bare him after Absalom. And he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar, the priest. And they, following Adonijah, helped him. All right. So now you have another one of David's sons that's doing what? Trying to be king. He trying to take the kingdom again. So you look at it. This is what David knows is going to happen. Why did David know this? All right. We can rewind. We just did a fast forward real quick. Looked into a future just a little bit. Right. This is what happens right after David tries to increase his numbers. His son is coming after him. David knows this is about to happen. But why would David know? Because of God's prophecy. The most high God gave him a prophecy. He told him. Right. When he told him. When he killed Uriah, when he had Uriah killed because he had he, he slept with his wife, got caught, you know what I'm saying? Or not got caught, but she got pregnant. So he was like, you know what I'm saying? Let me see if I can set him back up. You know what I'm saying? We can blame the baby on him and everything good. Uriah like, nah, I ain't about to go mess with my wife because I'm supposed to be in the war. He an honorable man. David's like, mm, that plan ain't going to work. I got to get you get killed. So he put Uriah on the front line, killed him. God was like, yep, I saw what happened. And he talked to David about it, Right. What, he told David three things. One of those three things was the sword will never depart from your house. 
In other words, it's always going to be somebody at your butt. David knows this already. So when David starts feeling a little peace, he also feels anxiety because he knows it's about to happen again. So in his mind, going back to second, uh, let's go back to second Samuel. This is second Samuel uh, chapter 24. What verse we leave off on? Two. Verse two. Right. So in his mind, he looking like I need to increase the people. Right. For him, this is coming from pride. So that's why the book starts off with most High God wanted to move him. He wanted to move against David. He was angry with him, so he moved against David. Matter of fact, hold we got there. Go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. 2 Chronicles verse, chapter 21, verse 1. Watch the book say. A lot of people don't even understand. You know what I'm saying? We don't understand. Oftentimes, we don't understand, like, we don't really understand how God moves. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, what his objectives are. Second Chronicles or first? Uh, first Chronicles, sorry. First Chronicles, chapter uh, 21, verse 1. Watch the book, sir. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Right? So, right here, it tell you who stood up against Israel. David. Before we just read, what did it say? Uh, Yahuwah was, the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, go number Israel and Jews. Right? So, one saying Satan did it, one said God did it. How does that work? God sent Satan to do it. Go to Job. This is Job chapter 1, verse, what, 6? Six one one seven. This is Job chapter one, I think, verse seven. Maybe six. Now there was a day when the sons of God. What came verse is that? Six. This is uh, Job chapter one, verse six. Watch what the book says. When the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came along uh, uh, also among them. All right. So who came? Savior, and he was among who? The sons of God. Sons of God are what? What's another name that we might commonly call them now? Angels. We might say angels, right? You know what I'm saying? Like heavenly bodies, right? So you got you got Satan coming and all the heavenly bodies, all the angels is right there. And then what happened next? And the Lord said to Satan. Most like, look, book don't tell us nothing about what he said to the other sons of God. We ain't got no documentation about that. You know what it did document? Then the Lord said to Satan. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, Satan. Where you coming from, boy? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, boy? Where you coming from? Right? Watch this. And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, nah, God. Boy, I've been walking back and forth, up and down, all through earth. That's what he told him. He looked like, say, all of, look, I like all them boys. It was a big group of them. I like to imagine Satan was all the way in the back with his head down, just kind of timid. You know what I'm saying? Walking in there. Most I got to look through the crowd. Hold on, watch out. Hey, Satan, boy! Where you come from? Oh, no, I was just, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, man. I've been walking back and forth. But I've been out there looking for them boys. Right? That's what Satan is communicating. He say, he's talking to him. He's saying, man, I've been looking for them. I've been out there looking for some good prospects. That's a good one, baby girl. You ain't drawn that. Oh, that's a good one, baby girl. Go draw some more. Go show your mom. Right? He, he telling them, I've been walking back and forth, up and down. I've been looking for him. God, I've been looking for him. Right? You know that's what he telling them. Because watch what God say next. And the Lord said unto Satan, have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> oh, you've been looking for him. I got one for you. I got one for you. You, you thought about Job yet? Did, was Satan thinking about Job? Satan was none the wiser about Job. Who snitched Job out? God did. God looking like, oh, you, you, you ain't found Job? Watch this. That there is none like him in the earth. Oh, the earth then he provoking earth. Satan. Oh, he a bad boy now, Satan. You can get the rest of these folks. You ain't going to be able to tip Job. Now, that's an upright man. Righteous. He do what he's supposed to do. You can't touch him, Job. Now what Satan got to think. It, this is Satan's job. My whole job is to make people compromise, right? 
My job is to make sure that when people say, I love God and I'm going to be faithful for the rest of my life, to be like, hmm, let's see if you're still going to be faithful with this in front of your face. Or if somebody do that to you. Or if somebody do this. His whole job is to put us in situations to compromise our faith, to make us go against what we said and commit it to God. Right? That's his whole entire plan. Most High God is throwing it in his face like, well, that's a bad. Listen, Joe? I don't know if you can get him now. You know what I'm talking about? You probably get some of here. I don't know if you can get Joe. So now Satan, he's licking his chop. He's sitting there. I'll get him right now. You ever had some homeboy? You know what I'm saying? Y'all probably ain't. You know, yeah, you. <laughs> we didn't have some homeboy. You know what I'm talking about? That we know. Be like, man, I wouldn't let him talk to me like that. You know what I'm talking about? You be like, I wouldn't let him talk to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. He got that rag on right in front of you, though. That's not. Nah, that's your hood, though. Man, you know what I'm saying? That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't get him. And that's why I went up like, man, who you talking to? I'm going to knock him out right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to knock him out right now. Right? Then you do it. Right? So you look at it. That's what, that's what, that's what God doing to Joe. I mean, to um, that's what God doing to Satan. He kind of riled him up like, no, nah, man, you can get him. Watch this. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Mm hmm. Have you not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Mm -hmm. You have blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. All right. So now Satan is saying you saying that he upright, but he only upright. This is the book called Satan or what? The accuser. This is what he's doing. He's accusing him. He's basically saying the only reason like, yeah, you bragging about him. Yeah, all right, for sure. I admit he upright. But is it for no reason? He only upright because you got his light bulb cushy. If you give him a little adversity, I bet that boy will curse you to his darn family, curse you, curse you to your face. Right? That's his accusation. He's accusing him. He's not really righteous. It's the conditions that you got him in to make him righteous. That's the accusation. Right? You got to think of Satan like, like when you think of a court case, right? God is the judge, right? Yahushua, right? The Messiah is the judge, right? And then, I mean, I'm sorry, Yah is the judge, right? And then you would have the Messiah as like our lawyer, right? He would be the one that, you know what I'm saying? We paid a retainer to have him there. You know what I'm saying? He going to be the one that, you know what I'm saying? Listen, look, if you agree, you know what I'm saying, to do community service and this, that, and the other, I'm going to get this knocked down to time served. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get the time served. You know what I'm saying? You'll do a couple years of parole, this, that, and other. That's what lawyers do. They take it. You own for murder. He say, look, I'm going to make a deal. With the judge and with the prosecutor, and we're gonna get this thing knocked down. Right? That's what our life is. That's why we gotta give everything. That's why if you leave court, right? If you in court and you got charges and they get reduced, the next thing they're gonna tell you is this is what you gotta do over the next X period of time. You gotta complete these classes, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta do that. What happened if you you it's paperwork? Boom, you got this is the things you gotta do, and if you do, then this is on your record. As a parking ticket or whatever. What happens if you don't complete them things? It's gonna go right back to what it was before. That's the situation that we in. Right? We accept y'all. Sure, we like, okay, nope, nah, I got you. I'm gonna do everything you say. Cool. We do it, time served. We good. We don't, that thing go right back to how it was, right? So now on the other end of that, you got your lawyer, you got your judge, who on the other side? The accusers, the prosecution. And what do prosecutors do before when they build in their case? Before it's the court date, what does the prosecution team do to build their case? They hire investigators. They got the police force working. And what they do, they try to put you in situations. If somebody out there dealing drugs, right? They stand in the arms and they're out there dealing drugs. The first thing they're going to do is set up the camera. Let's watch them. You know what I'm saying? We got them. Okay, we got them. Okay, but we need more than that. All right, for sure, for sure. Now the next thing they're going to do, they're going to dress up like, a, you know what I'm saying, somebody trying to buy you. Oh, no, man, you know what I'm saying? Let me get, you know what I'm saying, let me get that. Then you sell it to them. What they're going to do? That's it. Got it. Gaffle them up. Put them in, right? They put you in a situation to compromise you, right? They wasn't really trying to buy no drugs. That was fake. But they know that you're willing to sell drugs. They know that if I walk up to him offering him money for what he got, he going to give it to me. And this is what Satan do. Satan's a theory. To do that, you know what they got to get signed off by the, by the judge? 
They got to get a warrant signed by the, the judge got to agree to it. The judge got to be like, that's that's according to the law what y'all doing. Right? Okay, good. Judge sign the warrant. Or the, is the judge and the prosecutor working against each other? No. Never. Never. Nor is God and Satan. They work in concert for justice. It's just that Satan's job is to accuse your butt. Right? So God going to use Satan in whatever manner he needs to get to justice, to get to right. So that's what he did with Job. In Job's situation, Job was righteous, but Job didn't have all the information. The whole book of Job, you know what you're reading? You're reading Job bewildered in disbelief. Like, listen, I just about my whole life have done everything I'm supposed to do. This ain't got no business happening to me. That's his whole mind. The whole book, he's in there. He's trying to explain to his friends. Listen, listen, I hear what y'all saying. Because his friends don't understand it. His friends look at it like, if bad stuff happened to you, it's because you did something wrong. Simple. Right? And Job was like, no, I get it. I'm with you. 90% of the time, I am with you when you say that. But I'm telling y'all, I didn't do nothing wrong. And so Job is so confident about him not doing nothing wrong, he telling his friends, oh, if I had a day in court with to see my accuser. That's what he's saying. If I could just face my judge, I would explain to him like, oh, he he said God must kid you not. He's saying God must have made he must have overlooked something. That's the confidence that he has because in his mind, if something bad happened to you, it's because he said, but he know I didn't see it. So it's like, oh, somebody made a mistake in his mind. He's a thousand percent sure of it. So much so he's like, I'm willing to face God and argue this. Now, a lot of people we've been taught. Oh, Job was what? Self-righteous. Self-righteous. That's what we've been taught, right? And though he was, that wasn't a bad thing for Job. If you look at the end of the book, everybody get cursed out except Job. Because it was educational. It was to teach Job that although you are righteous, you ain't exempt. From something bad happening to you. Yeah, you not exempt. Like, you can still be touched. Just because you're righteous, I'm still going to put, I might put you through the ringer because you're righteous. Because I got to test, you got to prove it to yourself. I need you to know that you can't break. And I need other people to see it. That's what it's for. We all, we, a lot of times we go through stuff, we be thinking it's about us. You got to set your mind to know it's never about you. The most I got, you know how many of us that he can just pull up? Man told us, Yahushua, what did, we ain't got to get it, but Yahushua told us, he said, he said, uh, what did he say? <laughs> it depends. He said a lot of things. <laughs> what did he say? He said, he said, after you get done doing everything unprofitable, sir, that the most high God told you to do, he said, you should look at yourself like you are an unprofitable servant. We did. We In did. other words, you did nothing for God. So if that's God's mindset towards you, right, <laughs> it's important to understand that God love you for sure if you keep his commandments, right? It's not a matter of love. He's looking at you and saying, you don't do anything for me, though. Like, you don't benefit me at all, right? I love you just because you're doing what I told you to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm loving you. Like, I'm doing you a solid. But you're not doing anything for me. So if that's his mindset, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, don't you know that he got a million? Like, he didn't got anybody else. They'd be like, yo, yo. Nah, nah get ready. Yo, yo, come on. You know what I'm saying? Let's get this done. He got a whole, he got a whole uh, bench of players that are just step up at any point. At any point. So it's never about us as the individual. It's always about the people around us. It's always about the people who looking at us. Right? And if you look at that, and if Job knew that, Job wouldn't know that because he didn't have all the scripture that we got, right? We got all the stuff. Job was at the beginning. The most I got used Job to teach us, right? But if Job understood the complexity of it, he would know, oh, it's not just as simple as because I do righteous, everything should go right for me, right? And because I mess up, something should happen. It wouldn't have been confused. It just would have been like, oh, I got to eat this. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm doing right. I'm going to be good in the end. I just got to eat this. This is just, just come with the territory sometimes, right? So that's what we're looking at. Most High God, he pointed out Job. He told Satan, yo, go, go touch him. 
Satan make the accusation first, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, you know what I'm saying? If, if you do such and such, you know what I'm saying, and touch, you know what I'm saying, and touch his family, take away his stuff, you know what I'm saying? He'll curse you to his face. Most high God said, He said, All right, go ahead and do it. And the book gonna tell you, let's read it real quick. All right, let's read it. He said, the book gonna tell you. The reason why I like going here, because you look at you look at 2 Samuel 24. And you look at First Chronicles 21. One say Satan, one say God. And you see the exact same thing here in Job, right? Watch what, watch what Satan say. But put forth your hand now and touch all that he has. Who is he talking to? Who's talking right now? Satan. So it's Satan talking. Who is he talking to? God. So he's telling God, God, you put forth your hand. So God puts forth God's hand. This is what Satan is saying. Watch this. Put forth your hand now and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. And the so now, Satan said, God, you touch him. Now watch what God say to him. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only upon himself put forth not your hand. So now, God is saying, all right, I agree. It's in your power. Right? So you see, both of it, it's almost, it's the same touch. By Satan touching him, God is touching him. So God's allowing Satan to do it. Not just allowing. I'm telling you to do it. I'm telling you to do it. Oh, that's your accusation? All right. Go ahead and touch me. I just signed the warrant for you. Mm. You made your case. Did that another? Okay, did that another? Okay, cool. I signed the warrant. It's, it's lawful. Go ahead and do it. Right? Once we start understanding that, it's different. We've been raised. Listen, a lot of churches, we've been, we've been raised to talk to Satan. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Satan, get behind me. That's what we've been raised. It's because we have a lack of understanding of who, what the role that Satan plays. When was the last time? Well, how long are you going to sit and argue with somebody at Walmart? Before you be like, you know, I'm not about to deal with you. Uh, can I see your manager? You're not doing what you're supposed to do. Can I see your manager? We're wasting time. What am I going to talk to Satan for? I got a relationship with the man boss. I can call his boss whenever I want to. I need some understanding about what's happening right now. It's like, I just, personally, I don't get it. I need a little understanding about life is real messed up right now. I know I've been, I've been feeling like I've been doing what I'm supposed to do. Am I missing something? What am I supposed, that's how she, that's how we should be talking to God when this stuff happens. We ain't got no business in here going back and forth with Satan. You know why? His job is to trap you. You sitting there entertaining him. It opens up room for him to confuse you about something. And Satan is a bad man. Don't get there's a lot of people trying to talk like Satan. No, ain't nobody. This man been lying for a long time. We be falling for stupid lies. You know what I mean? I mean, first time a girl told me she loved me. I fell for it. <laughs> right? I fell for it. Stupid lie. I look back, I'll be looking at it like, now all the signs was right there. Boy, you knew she didn't. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but you fall for it. We fall for silly lies. Just because we got, and you think, who you think taught them how to lie? The people who lied to us in our life, who you think taught them? And who you think taught the parents? <laughs> That's cold, though. Who you think taught the parents? Huh? And how far you think it go back? It can go all the way back to Satan. Books say he the what? Father of life. He the father of lies. So yeah, he learned it from their parents. And if you draw their parents, the the you know, you trace their lion lineage all the way back, it's gonna take you right back to Satan. Boom, King Poppy. Right? That's why it's important for us to understand what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with Satan. You know what I'm saying? We're dealing with God. We're dealing with the hand of God. Right? Now, to that point, watch what watch what happened next. This is uh this is uh second Samuel. Chapter um, 24. 2 Samuel chapter 24. Give me verse. We only on two? Oh, see, y'all got me doing too much talking. This is 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 2. Watch what the book says. For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him, go now through all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba and number the people. That's right. That I may know the number of the people. Mm -hmm. And Joab said unto the king, now, Yahuwah, your God, add unto the people how many soever they be, a hundredfold, mm -hmm. and that the eyes of my Lord the king may see it. 
But why does my lord the king delight in this thing? Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the captains of the host. And Joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. So in other words, they're saying that was an argument, but David won that argument, right? Keep going. Watch this. And they passed over Jordan and pitched in a rower on the right side of the city that lies in the midst of the river of mm -hmm. Gad and toward Jazer. Mm -hmm. Then they came to Gilead into the land of Tatim Hodashi. Mm -hmm. And they came to Dan Jaon and about to Zidon. Mm -hmm. And came to the stronghold of Tyre and to all the cities of the Hivites and the Canaanites. And they went out of the south of Judah, even to Beersheba. So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and 20 days. Mm -hmm. and Joab gave up the sum of the number of the people unto the king. And there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men that drew the sword. All right, when they say Israel, it's talking about what? Uh, the... Um, the northern tribe. it's talking about the northern remember we 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 have learned to distinct ourselves in the kind of two separate tribes at this point because of really because of david right because david had all of judah which was large right judah was powerful by itself but all of judah started to support david so now we kind of saw see ourselves as like kind of a split nation where you got israel and you got judah so israel technically all of us are israel but when it says Israel, it's talking about the northern part. It's talking about the, the other 11, 10 or 11 tribes at different times. It just depends. But it's talking about the other 10 or 11 tribes. And then when they say Judah, it's usually talking about just Judah, which is a very, very large tribe by itself. So it's 800,000 people in all of Israel except J Judah. But watch this. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. We well, skipped something, didn't we? Yeah. And Joab gave up the sum of the people unto the king, and there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men that drew the sword. Mm -hmm. And the men of Judah were 500,000 men. Now it's 500,000 in Judah by itself. So Judah's one tribe. Israel is 11 tribes. And still, it's 500,000. They almost got, they got more than half of Israel by themselves. So you can see Judah by itself is very powerful, right? So it kind of it kind of separated them into two groups, and that's kind of how we viewed ourselves, All right? Keep going. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. Mm -hmm. and David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I in that, that I have done. Right. So now after 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 he got the number, it come to him. Ain't that how it happened? Right. It's right when you get done and you get done with your sin. As soon as it get done, be like, oh, I done messed up. You start feeling guilty. Right. That's what happened to him. As soon as he get he is looking like, you know what? I messed up. I messed up. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say unto David, Thus says Yahuwah, mm -hmm. I offer thee three things. All right, Mozart God said, Look, you can choose your punishment. I give you three options. Watch this. Choose thee one of them that I may do it unto thee. Watch this. So Gad came to David and told him and said unto him, shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land. Right. It's going to be seven years and people ain't going to be able to have good food. Right. It's going to be a scarcity of food for seven years. That is tough for a king, ain't it? It's a king's job to provide, provide for his nation. So now his first option is your nation going to be starving for seven years. What would that do to his 8,500, I mean, 800,000 and 500,000 people that he just counted? Take the numbers down. It's going to take them numbers down, boy. Because what are people going to do when there ain't no food? They're going to go to other nations. Boy, I'm about to go to Moab. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to see what Edom over there talking about. We got to move. We can't sit here. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's rough out here. We can't sit here and do this. So now David looking like, mm, all right, let me hear, let me hear option two. All right, let me see. What's behind door number two? <laughs> or will you flee three months before your enemies while they pursue you? All right? He said, or you can get your butt out of dodge while your enemies is chasing your butt. What is that going to do for a king? Uh, you lose your kingdom. You lose your kingdom. 
Huh? Yeah, <laughs> you're going to lose your king. You out of there. Now your kingdom going to have to be run by somebody else. And what is what is he already worried about? Somebody going to take my kingdom. So now if I'm on the run, my kingdom's out of here. We done. Right? Let's, I got to, I got to know what is behind door number three. All right? Put it in the microwave. Or that there be three days pestilence in thy land. All right? Three days pestilence in the land. How long he is supposed to be on the run? Three months. So you got three years of famine. Seven. I mean, seven years of famine. Three three months of, of being on the run as the king. Or three days of pestilence in the land. Pestilence is like, you know what I'm saying? Like people going to be sick. Yeah, people going to be sick, dying. You know what I'm saying? Dying from sickness. Right? So the first one, people going to leave you. The second one, you're going to lose the people just because somebody going to mess around and take over your kingdom because you're on the run. And the third one, the people that you just counted, about to die. Right? Which one would y'all choose? Third one. Third one? I don't know. That's a tough one for the king. Let's see what David chooses. What is it going to be, David? Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. Mm -hmm. And David said unto Gad, I am in the great strait. He said this thing. When it's a great strait, oh. he's saying it's tight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Straight me, straight me that thing tight. You know what I'm saying? Go so he's saying, boy, I'm trapped. Right? That's what he's saying. I don't have a whole lot of options. He said, this is, this is troublesome. It's a great strait. It's this is tough, is what he's trying to say. Right? Watch this. Sorry. Speak of a straight jacket. Mm hmm Let us fall now into the hand of Yahuwah, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hand of man. Right? So he's sitting there, he's looking like, it'd be better for me to fall in the hand of Yahuwah. In other words, the pestilence, because he know that that's, that's a sickness that's coming from God, rather than have a whole bunch of people chasing him. You can tell he didn't consider that family. He's like, no, that's you know what I'm saying? Famine is out. We ain't even we ain't about to talk about this darn famine. That don't even make no sense, right? Watch this. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed, and there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. Mm -hmm. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said unto the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna the Jebusite. Mm -hmm. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. Mm -hmm. And Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up rear and go up rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of Gad, went up as the Lord commanded. And Aruna looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Aruna went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. Mm -hmm. And Aruna said, Arauna said, Why is my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor from you, and to build an altar unto Yahuwah, that the plague may be stayed from the people. Mm -hmm. And Aruna, and Aruna said unto David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seems good unto him. Behold, here be oxen for burnt sacrifice, and threshing instruments, and the other instruments of the oxen for wood. Mm -hmm. And these things did Aruna as a king gave, as a king gave unto the king. And Aruna said unto the king, Let the Lord thy God accept thee. And the king said unto Aruna, No, Watch this. but I will surely buy it from you at a price. All right? So Aruna was sitting there like, Oh, no, we need to get this taken. Oh, don't worry about it. Look, I got everything you need. Don't even worry about it. It's taken care of already. David looking like, you got to think, so you got to put yourself in David's position. David slept with another man's wife, had him killed. It's secret. Don't nobody even know about that. Most High God looked out for him and kept it a secret. But he told him, although what you did was secret, what's about to happen to you? Everybody about to know about. So then, then after that, he hear it. You know, you hear it. Like, 
ooh, that's about to be bad. But then you start going through your life and experiencing exactly what he told you. And it's like, oh, this thing is rough. So now you're guilty because you got one son that died behind your mess. You got another son that died behind your mess. Now you got now you got all these people dying behind your mess. Women getting killed. Wars breaking out in your land. A whole bunch everybody dying behind your mess. Man. And don't nobody even know this is your mess. But you know it. And another son died. And, an, and another son died behind your mess. Right? So all this stuff is happening. You know, nobody knows this is all behind your mess. But you know it. The whole time you're sitting there like, goodness gracious. And then you make this choice. And you say, let me fall into the hands of God. And then all these people start dying again. So you feel it and you're like, dang it, yet again, I'm the one that was supposed to die. Most of God didn't kill me. I'm the one that was supposed to die. But yet again, I'm having all these people killed on behind my mess. So that's why he jumped in. He's like, look, look, these are just sheep. These people just following me. Kill me instead. After that, most of God like, no, no, no. Angel, no, no, it's cool. It's enough. Angel talked to him like, yo, 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 go make a sacrifice. Get this done. So his mindset is, I need to pay for my mess. Right? So now, yet again, you got somebody else trying to pay for it. No, 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 I got this taken care of. First thing David says, no. No. Watch this. I will surely buy it from you mm -hmm. at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto you, who am I God of that which cost me nothing. Mm -hmm. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 30 shekels of silver. Mm -hmm. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. That's the end of the chapter. Mm -hmm. Where are we at? Let's go to First Kings chapter 20, uh, okay. chapter one. First Kings chapter one, verse one. <clears throat> Now, David was old and stricken in years, mm -hmm. and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Jump on down. Where we, where we is that? Jump on down to uh, and his father had not, And his father had not displeased him at the time, saying, why have you done so? Mm -hmm. He also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. Right? So, in other words, you remember Absalom, right? Absalom was a bad boy. Yeah, he was the one that just, you know what I'm saying, that they just killed. So, Absalom rose up. That was David's son, Right? Abijah came after Absalom from the same mother as Absalom, right? So that's his older brother. Just think about the psychology of it all. Like think about how people feel and how people think. So this is Adonijah. I mean Adonijah. Mm -hmm. I said Abijah. That's Adonijah. Then my fault. So Adonijah is Absalom's younger brother, mm -hmm. right? That means he got a sister, and his sister was what? Uh, sister was a. Uh... I forgot her name. No, I mean, what happened to her? Oh, she got she got violated by her other brother. His sister got violated by another one of his, you know what I'm saying? We would say half brothers. Right? So remember how Absalom was upset about that to the point where he killed his brother. Then he tried to kill his dad. And that's my older brother. And my dad killed my older brother. Right? So maybe we cool with it, but I'm of age now. My dad is old. We need another king anyway. And my mindset is like, well, I saw Absalom do that. That's my older brother. I come, that's my I come from him full, right? David, my daddy, and Absalom mama is my mama. Like I'm we the we of the same thing. He looking like, well, you know what I'm saying? It's about that time, Pop. Same thing Absalom did. Absalom saw that David getting a little older, and Absalom was feeling like it's about that time. Like, look, you kill Absalom, you owe me this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I should be next. Yeah, he you know might feel mean? like, yeah, he might feel like you killed my brother, you killed my little brother. You killed my mama firstborn. Right? Like, I, I I feel like this is the right thing to do. And you owe. Like, you got you got women, they gotta, they gotta like lay in the bed with you to keep you warm. Cause you know what I'm saying? We ain't had no heater. It ain't like we can just, you know what I'm saying? It ain't like now we can just turn on the heater. Right? So we, as a king, it'd be like, man, look, I'm old, and at all cost, king gotta be protected. He ain't even sleeping with the women. You know what I'm saying? The women just like, the women just, look, just come lay with him. You know what I'm saying? Use your body heat. Because my body, when you get old, your body heat don't work the same. Right? Your body start breaking down. So it's like, I need, I need, don't be funny now. I'm not that old. You need to cut that out. Right? It's like, you know what I'm saying? They looking like, okay, well, let's just lay, you know what I'm saying? I'll use your body heat to keep me warm. 
right? And that's what was going on. So you look at that, it's like, yeah, that's about time, Pop. You know what I'm saying? You're looking at it like, Pop, oh, it's about time. You know what I'm saying? Just let me, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and do it. Books say David was looking at him like, man, I ain't gonna say nothing to him. Why wouldn't David say nothing to him? He feels real guilty. But he know he already know. He already know. David looking like, oh, not this again. Here we go again. Because he looking like, am I gonna have to see another one of my sons die? Right? He didn't want to kill Absalom. He didn't want his oldest boy to uh, die. Right? He didn't want his new baby born, born, you know what I'm saying, born out of adultery. He didn't want his baby to die. It's three sons I had to lose. Is this going to be number four? Let's see. And he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar, the priest. And they followed Adonijah, helping him. But Zadok the priest and Benaiah, Benaiah, and the son of Jehoiada, I mean Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan the prophet, and Shimei, and Ray, and the mighty men which belonged to David were not with Adonijah. Right. So Adonijah <laughs> took a few people. Who he take though? Joab. You see that coming? You remember Joab and, you know what I'm saying, Joab and David ain't been on the same page since Amasa. Right? Joab just tried to stop him. Think about from Joab's point of view. Right? I've been rocking with you. It always feels like, you know what I'm saying, when stuff gets thick, you're against me. That's how Joab might be feeling. Like, it always feels like, like, we out here fighting these wars for you, and you over here trying to save your son who's trying to kill us and you over us. And we fight, and you ask us to go fight. Make that make sense. That, from Joab's point of view, he like, make that make sense for me. And now we get the job done and you crying in front of all the people after we just rich all our life? Well, if you don't get your butt out there and encourage your people, right? So David looks like, I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? David, to him, to be true, he don't, he don't really want to try to go away Joab, right? So he, I'm going to do it. But after that, he like, that boy fired. Talking to him. So he fired Joab. He put a mason in there. What Joab do about it? Kill a mason. How Joab, I mean, how David feel about that? I mean, you a scandalous little scoundrel. And then Joab looking like, I tried to tell you not to number the people. You number the people. You number the people. Everybody and now dying. people out here dying and suffering behind your mess again. Because Joab know. It's a secret to more people. Joab know. Remember, Joab, this one of Joab's soldiers, Uriah, he was one of Joab's soldiers. So then he get the message from David like, yeah, go ahead and put Uriah in the front line. Go ahead and have him killed. Joab read it like, I'm with the business, you know. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. But Joab looking like this is foolishness. He said the letter, yeah. Just so you know, it's done. Yeah, he let him know. Yeah, nah. Yeah, tell him, tell him, tell him. You know what I'm saying? Tell him that we, you know what I'm saying? We lost the battle, all that. Oh, but tell. Okay, after that, tell him that Uriah is dead. Just to kind of stick it to him. Like if if he get mad about us losing the battle, let him know what Uriah did. We probably because he done. Joab being Uriah. passive aggressive, let him know we're supposed to be out here. Well, I don't take no losses. We probably would have won if I had Uriah. Yeah, you know I mean, like I if I would have had my man. So Joab don't like all that stuff. He, he ain't feeling all that. So then stuff starts to break up. And what's happening right now? Joab looking like, that's not you, you know what I'm saying? You all right. You shaped like your daddy, too. You might have them things, boy. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. So he joined the other side. He joined his son, right? Many other people stayed with David. So now you got this split happening. Watch this. Keep going. And Adonijah slew sheep and oxen and fat cattle by the stone of Zeholith, which is by En Rogel, and called all his brothers the king's sons and all the men of Judah the king's servants. Mm -hmm. But Nathan the prophet and Benaiah and the mighty men and Solomon his brother he called not. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, has not thou heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, does reign, and David our Lord knows it not? Now therefore, come, let me, I pray thee, give you counsel, that you may save your own life and the life of your son Solomon. And go and get thee into the king, unto the king David, and say unto him, Did, did this not thou, my lord the king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, mm -hmm. and he shall sit upon my throne. Why then does Adonijah reign? And why would Solomon, why would he make that proclamation about Solomon? Because of, because of what he did. You remember the Most High God gave him a prophecy. Most High God told him, 
it's going to come through your son. He told him specifically, your son Solomon is going to be the one. Now, remember, Solomon came from Uriah's wife. Right. So Uriah's wife had a baby. Seven days, that baby died. Then she had another baby. His name was Solomon. Right. So Solomon came from the woman he had adultery with. So the most high God told him specifically and rest assured, it's going to come through him, Solomon. So David being confident about that, Lord, that he like, listen, that's going to be the boy who sit on the throne. He's already made these promises. So Adonijah, he's starting to take over. Now I'm confused, David. What's going on? Let's straighten this out, right? Because David's not standing against it. So now it's disarray. It's a mess, right? Watch this. Behold, while you yet talk there with the king, I also will come in after you and confirm your words. Mm -hmm. And Bathsheba went in unto the king, into the chamber. That's Uriah's wife, right? Bathsheba. And the king was very old. And Abishag, the Shunammite, ministered unto the king. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. And the king said, what wouldest thou? And she said unto him, In other Lord, words, what you want, right? When you say, what would he look like? What you want, baby? You know what I'm saying? That's what he said. What you want, baby? You know what I'm saying? What you need? You know what I'm saying? Let's see. My Lord, you swear, you swore by the Lord thy God unto your handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon, your son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And now behold, Adonijah reigns, and now, my Lord, the king, you know it not. Mm -hmm. And he's slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and has called all the sons of the king, and Abiathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host, mm -hmm. but Solomon thy servant. As he could not call. And you, my Lord, O King, the eyes of all Israel are upon you, that you should tell them who shall sit on the throne of my Lord the King after him. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it shall come to pass when my Lord the King shall sleep with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. Mm -hmm. And lo, while she yet talked with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. Mm -hmm. And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet. And when he was come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My Lord, O King, as you said, Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. For he has gone down this day and has slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and has called the king's sons and the captains of the host. And Abiathar the priests, and behold, they eat and drink before him, and say, God save king Adonijah. But me, even my, even me, your servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and thy servant Solomon, he has not called. Is this thing done by my lord the king? And thou has not showed it unto thy servant who shall sit on the throne of my Lord, the king after him. All right. So they basically ask him, are you approving this mess? We haven't heard you make a statement against it. So are you behind this? Are you approving this? Right. If so, explain. We confused. Right. So keep going. Watch this. And King David answered and said, call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore and said, as Yahuwah lives, that that has redeemed my soul out of all distress, mm -hmm. even as I swear unto thee by Yahuwah God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon, your son, shall reign after me, mm -hmm. and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. Mm -hmm. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, Let my lord, King David, live forever. Mm -hmm. And King David said, Call me Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And they came before the king. And the king also said unto them, take with you the servants of your Lord and call Solomon, my son, to ride upon my own mule and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him their king over Israel and blow the trumpet and say, God save King Solomon. Then ye shall come up after him that he may come and sit upon my throne, for he shall be king in my stead. And I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. All right. So you see Solomon had to ride in on what? Mule. That's why that's why Yahweh sure had to ride in on the donkey. Right? That's what it came from. Like, you know what I'm saying? David thought he was giving instructions to Solomon. You know what I'm saying? He didn't realize actually he had given instructions to, to Yahweh to the Messiah. Right? The Messiah had to fulfill all this stuff. Right? So we see that when the Messiah rolled in, he rolled in on the donkey. That's because, you know what I'm saying? That's what Solomon had to ride in on the mule. Right? When he rolled in on that donkey, what they say to him? Uh the king. They said, Hosanna, Hosanna. King, king of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Right? They called him king of Israel when the Messiah rolled in, right before they put that man on the cross. 
Right? Keep going. Watch this. And then Ai, the son of Jehoiada, answered the king and said, Amen. The Lord, the Yahuwah God of my Lord, the king, say so too. Mm -hmm. And as Yahuwah has been with my Lord, the king, even so, he will be with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord, King David. That's right. So Zadok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and the Kerathites, and the Pelethites went down and called Solomon to ride upon the King David's mule and brought him to Gihon. And Zadok, the priest, took a horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon. And they blew the trumpet. And all the people said, God save King Solomon. And the Lord and all the people came up after him. And the people piped with pipes and rejoiced with great joy so that the earth rent with the sound of them. Mm -hmm. And Adonijah and all the guests that were with him heard it as they made an end of eating. Mm -hmm. And when Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, why is this noise of the city being in an uproar? All right, Joab was like, whoa, 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 what's happening? All right, what's all this noise? We're supposed to be the ones making noise. What's all this noise? And while he yet spake, behold, Jonathan, the son of Abiathar, the priest came, and Adonijah said unto him, come in. For you are a valiant man and bring good tidings. And Jonathan answered and said unto Adonijah, Verily our lord the king David has made Solomon king. And the king has sent with him Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the Carathites, and the Pilathites, and they have caused him to ride upon the king's mule. Mm -hmm. And Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king in Gihon, and they are come up from there rejoicing, so that the city rang again. Mm -hmm. This is the noise that you have heard. And also Solomon sits on the throne of the kingdom. And moreover, the king's servants came to bless our Lord, the King David, saying, God, make the name of Solomon better than your name and make his throne greater than your throne. Right. The king so bowed himself upon the bed. Right. So all these things are happening. These are like ceremonial things in front of all the people to make it look official. Right. So that causes a problem for Adonijah. Adonijah looking like now I got to look official and I ain't got my, my pops behind me. Right. Where, 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 where are we at right now? Verse 48. Chapter 1 still? No, 47. Yeah. Okay, let's finish out chapter 1. And also, thus says the king, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which has given one to sit on my throne this day, my eyes even seeing it. Mm -hmm. And all the guests that were with Adonijah were afraid and rose up and went every man his way. <laughs> and Adonijah feared because of Solomon and arose and went and caught hold on the horns of the altar. Mm -hmm. And it was told Solomon, saying, Behold, Adonijah fears King Solomon. For lo, he has caught hold of the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear unto me today that he will not slay his servant with the sword. Mm -hmm. And Solomon said, If he will show himself a worthy man, there shall not a hair of him fall to the earth. But if wickedness shall be found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar. And he came and bowed himself to the King Solomon. And Solomon said unto him, Go to thine house. All right? So you see the first show of mercy there. All right. David is looking like, man, I might be ready to lose another son over this foolishness. But Solomon, he was the one. He didn't push his way in. His mom advocated for him. It's a grown man. His mom advocated for him. You know what I'm saying? Nathan, the prophet advocated for him. After that, Pop was like, all right, man, go ahead and do it. Pop don't know what's about to happen. Pop looking like it's about to be a mess. But they go. The Most High God put the fear of Solomon in people. So after that, everybody just skid out like, nah, man, they over there right now. The whole everybody, David signed off on it. Let me go. I'm gonna get up. I'll see y'all later, man. I appreciate you. We had a good time. I'm gonna go ahead and see y'all later. I wasn't even here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That boy, that boy, that boy, Adonijah looking like, what I'm gonna do? He run and grind, grab the horns of the altar. He looking like, don't he can't kill me here. That's why he grab. He get he ain't gonna kill me in God's house. Right? Tell him that I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Tell him I didn't mean it. Right? Solomon being a wise, righteous man, Solomon said, No, oh, man, he showed himself, you know what I'm saying? He showed show himself a reputable man, show himself a worthy man. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing gonna happen to him. He come bow down to him. He said, Yeah, all right, go home. I'm king now. You know what I'm saying? You good, you safe. Right? That's how it works. And you're gonna see. In the next few chapters, that all of the stuff that was left open from David, all the stuff we've been reading over the next the last few weeks, you remember all them people that did stuff to David, he ain't do nothing about Joab, right? Uh, Shimei, Shimei um, Adonijah. yeah, Adonijah, it's a, it's a few of them, 
He ain't do nothing about it. You know how to do all that. Solomon, his boy, boy. Oh, that's about to get taken care of. Solomon going to he brings judgment. So it's important to understand Remember what Solomon. Time you, uh... yeah, yeah, that's a fact. Oh, no, come on back. Now, come on, come on back. Right? Solomon is about judgment, right? But his name means what? Peace. That's the conundrum that our Messiah is also. Right? A lot of people, you know what I'm saying? We've been presented a Messiah that's peaceful and meek. But when this man come back, it is for judgment. This man is coming back with people's names and numbers, right? So that's what Solomon represented. Although he is a man of peace, his name means peace. And you're going to see in his lifetime, he has nothing but peace. But he start this thing off with judgment, right? Let's just close out all these open cases and let's start afresh, right? Any questions? All right, well, let's pray out.